people. My name is Deetra Iverson. Um, I'm the lead farmer and owner of Love and Labor, Love and Labor Botanicals Farm. Um, we're located on the cusp, well, we're located in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, my pronouns are she, her. I've always had my hands in the dirt in one way or another. Um, but I didn't understand, I, I'd say a couple of years ago in the end of 2019 is when I really decided that I wanted to grow things full time. <laughs> How did you access land? What were some challenges you faced? And so my first year was growing primarily in containers in my backyard. And when I say I, I had about a hundred containers in my backyard. <laughs> and it got to be to where I was just like, wow, um, there has to be a better way of doing this. And that turned into me then like building my own raised beds. And that year I was growing like in larger containers and I really started falling in love with the process of farming. I'm yeah. still growing in my backyard, but we have yet since, um, you know, I ran out of space in my backyard and my husband's a landscaper and he decided like, D, you're not killing any more grass. <laughs> so um, I actually have a few plots oh, um, throughout the city of Detroit. They're primarily on the east side. So I'm really excited just about how everything's kind of growing. Um, I was really stuck on for a while, like the importance of owning land because um, owning land where I live is really difficult. And the process of access accessibility to kind of navigate um, the, the, the constructs of how to acquire land, um, they make it really tedious and, and frustrating. Um, so for me, I've been trying to purchase land since 2020. And um, I'm just now like, you know what I mean? Like kind of finishing up that process. Like we still haven't finished the closing papers, but we've signed a purchase agreement and everything is kind of like, you know, it's a process. I knew I wanted to stay on the East side. So um, I looked, I brought up a parcel viewer. Um, you can find those easily on Google. Some are better than others because some are updated a little bit better than others. But I just went on there and um, I was looking for large plots of land, like multiple parcels of land that were together. And after looking at them online and writing down um, addresses and uh, you know how big the parcels were, I then decided to go and take a look at the parcels because a lot of the times the pictures that they have online and on Google Maps aren't current to what the space actually looks like. So, and, and that's really important as for a farm because um, a place can, you can see these beautiful like parcels of land, maybe six parcels of land, but then when you get there, it's, pavement and impermeable surfaces. So for anyone who's looking for land, I think it's really important to not just look online and electronically and see who it's owned by, but also like go to that space if you can and check it out, see if there's existing trees, see if it was a piece of land that had a structure and then they demolished that structure because all of that will play a part in the work that you have to do upon purchasing that land. So um, I looked at the space and then I went through the application process and the purchase agreement that we'll be signing, although I've taken a look at it, both entities haven't signed it. And until we both sign it, it's not set in stone. And that agreement probably won't be signed for another month. So ultimately we won't be probably closing on our land until the summertime because nine times out of 10, while you're applying for land, you probably won't within that same season be able to farm on that land. What advice do you have for other farmers looking to purchase land? Being able to not only navigate the jargon that they use, but then making sure that you do a title search. You know what I mean? Like, because they're giving out deeds for these, for these places, but they're not warranty deeds. And again, this goes back to jargon <laughs> because if, if you don't know, a quick claim deed is different than a warranty deed. A quick claim deed just means that um, you have ownership um, and equity into the space, but there may be other people that have that are, that are on that same, quick, you know what I mean? There may be other interested parties on that deed. It can be very overwhelming. But I guess my question is to stay connected. If you can't, if, if ask questions and get better connected. Um, and if being connected 
being connected doesn't just mean um, putting your ear to the ground and listening to what's going on, but reaching out to organizations that if they, if they don't own land, you know, reaching out to organizations whose mission is to help people navigate these processes. The one thing that I can honestly say about the Detroit Black Farmer Land Fund that I love is after we said to them, hey, this doesn't really make any sense. I'm really having difficulty. The organization as a whole took it upon themselves to kind of fight some of that battle for me. So I could really just kind of focus on purchasing the land and, and, and getting back to my farming. The land that I tried to purchase was actually kind of kitty corner to where I live. And um, I was purchased, I was not so much outbid. They accepted my land proposal, but the neighbor directly next to those lots decided to purchase them through the side lot program. So it kind of trumped me. So that was my first land process. My second land process was I applied for another group of lots that were not too far from my home and they were grouped together. And I went through the process and um, I found out that I was outbid by another organization that wanted to use those spaces for um, books and learning, or guess, I guess some type of garden education. So again, like if I had decided after the first and second run, like I'm not doing this anymore, you know, I wouldn't be where I am now. So um, yeah, taking the time to research and really know what you want and be in communication.